Hello everybody, today is Feng Shui Stories Tuesdays and the story I want to share with you today is the story of a couple that had major breakthroughs in their life from making one Feng Shui change. So remember you have to watch the whole video to, so that you can listen to the story, understand the story and learn how to apply that to your life. And so this is the story of a couple who were both professional and very successful. Uh, and uh, they, had a, they were going through the emptiness syndrome. So they hired me because they wanted to change the use of the rooms. You know, the husband wanted to have a home office. Um, they were both retired. And uh, she wanted to have a sewing room and they had two kids that were now grown and had finished college and had their own lives. And so they hired me and uh, they, they had uh, some issues, right? And uh, when we do a consultation, a function consultation, the first thing we do is an assessment of the life areas. People do a life areas test. And by the way, if you haven't done the life areas test, let's, let me know and I'll share the link with you so you can uh, get the document and do the test. And so they did the test and we had a conversation and they had um, told me about some things that were going on in their life. So as a function consultant, First, you listen to people and to people's stories, you know, what's going on with their lives. And then you look at their home and you show people how things match, right? So for example, uh, if they're having an issue in their marriage, they might realize they don't have a relationship corner in their home when they apply the bubble map to the floor plan. So the, the document that I was telling you about has both a life areas test and a free feng shui bubble map and it connects you to an email sequence where I show you how to interpret your results. So if you haven't done that, let me know and I'll send you that link. And so this couple, you know, one of the things that uh, caught my attention was that I knew they were very successful and they were now retired. So money was not an issue. But when I went into their dining room, their dining set uh, was really, you know, it was like a table and uh, that they had gotten secondhand and chairs they had gotten secondhand. And um, the, they had bookcases instead of having a hutch and um, a china cabinet or a buffet table. They had bookcases and those bookcases were the kind that you find in a college dorm. And so they were made of press board and they, has, they were flexing from the, you know, the boards that are to, supposed to be straight that were going bowing. Um, they, were, they were, we call it flexing in architecture. They were making a bow, I guess. Bowing would be the term. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, um, but that surprised me. And so one of the things I uh, talked about with them is that if I didn't know it was their home, if I just went into that home and people asked me to, what impressions I got from the home just from looking at their furniture, I would have said, these are college students. And so indeed, they had bought those bookcases when they were in college. And then they never replaced them because they were not broken. <laughs> they were really good at taking care of furniture. so they they were not broken and uh, I understood them because that's something that I tend to do I sometimes don't replace things that I should replace because they're still working so uh, one uh, one time an article that I had shared with you at some point was me and my <laughs> hated mailbox you know I have for 12 years I had a mailbox I didn't like when we moved into the house where we live now and uh, I didn't want to get rid of the mailbox and change it because it was still good right so I, I understood how they felt but we had this conversation and i told them hey i think that you need a new dining set and the proper china cabinet or a buffet table you know something that really says we are successful professionals and um, even though they were retired professionals but they were successful and so after we finished the consultation they went and um, ordered from, uh, from a custom carpenter. They ordered a dining set. They looked for a model they really like, you know, table and chairs and a china cabinet and a buffet table. It's a beautiful set. It, it took three months to complete because it was all custom made from real wood. And their dining room that previously looked like the dining room of stu college students that are struggling finally started looking uh, like the dining room or two successful professionals and so 
after they did that, all sorts of beautiful, wonderful things started to happen. And they sent me a letter months later that just made me cry. And in the beginning, I was reading their letter and I was like, I didn't do this, <laughs> you know, because they were thanking me for this and this and this and that. And I was like, I can't take credit for that, you know, that was you guys. But here's the thing. Some of the beautiful things that had happened to them had to do with them hiring professionals. And so, for example, he had an issue with allergies and that uh, have, uh, it, it was not allergies he had all his life. He has recent onset of allergies and she has some issues with her gut. And so once they got that uh, beautiful dining set, their perception of themselves changed. And so before they were looking at this uh, college kid furniture thinking, we can't afford this, we can't afford that. Once they got the beautiful dining set, then they were able to say, hey, I really, really like this. Uh, and uh, wow, you know, we can afford this. We can afford to have really beautiful furniture. And so once they did that, they started getting the impression of themselves. They started to see themselves as people who could afford things people that could afford a nicer car, people that could afford to go on vacation, people that could afford to get a membership for a golf club, and people who could afford to hire a nutritionist. And so one of the things they had done and that was wonderful, beautiful for them is that they hired the nutritionist and uh, the nutritionist put them in, in a really nice nutrition program. And it turned out that both the allergies that he was suffering from and um, the gut problems she was having, they were related to what they were eating. And once they changed their nutrition and they started to eat healthier, their health problems went away. And so that was amazing. And it's rare for a client to attribute something like that to feng shui. And of course, feng shui did not resolve their health issue. Just because they got a new dining table, his allergies didn't go away. Just because they got a beautiful china cabinet, her gut problems didn't go away because of that. But the beautiful, furniture made of real good wood custom made they it gave them the feedback that they could afford things and one of the things they could afford was to pay a professional a nutritionist to look at how they were living to look at the things they were eating and to suggest the changes they needed to make and so that is the beauty of feng shui and that's the story i wanted to share with you today because right now your home is giving you messages the home is never quiet in feng shui we say Everything in your home, all the things in your home are talking to you. Make sure they have nice things to say. So everything in your home right now is telling you something. The, the furniture that you sit on, your chairs, your dining table, the countertops in your kitchen, the type of floor you have in your hallways, the kind of lighting you have in, in the ceiling, all of those things are giving you messages. And if those messages are positive, then your home is your BFF, you know, like your best friend forever. But if uh, your home is giving you bad messages, your home becomes your hidden enemy or your saboteur. You know, you, you start engaging in self-sabotage from the things that your home is telling you. And so I want you, your homework is this. I want you to think about something that you believe about yourself that's negative. For example, it may be, I'm always late. Or it may be, um, I just don't have a good memory. Or it may be, I argue with people a lot. I get into a lot of drama. So whatever you can think of. It may be, for example, I, um, I have an addiction with my phone. It could be any of those things, right? And, uh, and look around your home and think about, try to find a match. So what in your home is echoing those negative perceptions you have of yourself, right? So for example, one time I had a client that uh, had a drinking problem. And uh, the first thing you saw when you walked in her in her home was a vineyard. And uh, the second thing that, uh, well, when you came into the whole home, it was a vineyard, right? And then when you went into her kitchen, the first thing you saw was a painting of a bottle of wine in the cup. And so, whereas in another home that might not be a problem, in the home of somebody who has a drinking problem, that, that is a no-no, you know, you have to take those things out. And so, think about this negative quality that you think you have or think about this challenge that you're experiencing and look around your home see if you can find an echo for that and so in the example that i was giving you before right this person was drinking and there were uh, images of vineyards and wine in her home 
and so look at the problems that you are facing and see if there's something in the home that is uh, reproducing that and it may be for example it may be something that stresses you out so um when people have addictions there's a trigger right and i'm not saying you know i'm not saying that you can use feng shui to cure addictions as a feng shui consultant you know i, I would never say that because feng shui is about the space so you're creating environments you know you are not using feng shui as a magic pill and I know some feng shui teachers and consultants, they're like, oh, you have this problem, we're gonna put this cue in this corner, in this point in your home, and that's gonna be solved. Life is not like that, you know, life is more complex. But you can, um, you can create an environment where these things are less frequent or they're less possible. And so people get triggered, you know, when people um, go into addictive behavior, they're triggered by something, you know, so maybe because they feel upset, they feel frustrated, they feel alone, um, they have memories of trauma, so whatever it is. So if you can find what in the home is triggering that, you know, you know the, the triggers for stress are the same triggers for arguments. So any exposed cables, cables on the floor, uh, cracks on the wall, things that are in a, in a clear condition of disrepair, all these things are stressors and they also, increase irritability which in turn increases arguments so think about your problems see if you can find one thing in your home that is reinforcing those problems and then take that out and that is my message for you today uh, thank you for watching and let me know um, if you identified one thing some label that you use to define yourself or other people use to define you of something negative and see if you can find anything around the home hey alejandra and um and if you can find that thing, then see if maybe you can fix it or you can take it out. There's Victoria, so good to see you all. Um, and so take steps so that your home is your BFF, your best friend forever, instead of being your hidden enemy. And I'll see you next time for our Feng Shui stories. Bye-bye.